60 bucks? Yeah. We're at the Star Trek job. What are you? It actually did not take a while. I was very impressed how fast they got everybody registered and back to the line to get into the convention. Okay, we are on the floor. This place is huge, guys. Plenty to look at, plenty of panels and stuff I'm going to check out right now. Just going to get my first autograph with Terry Barrel, Deep Space Nine. Hopefully it's not too crowded. A lot of people, but in here it's not too bad. I was thinking for Friday, if this is a slow day, tomorrow is going to be absolutely insane in here. So we'll see about that. I'll check back in in a little bit. All right, looks like not all the celebrities are present at the moment. I know some of them are only here Saturday and Sunday. There's people here in Jonathan Frakes line and my understanding is he was Saturday and Sunday. Be great if he's here on Friday. The uh, Terry Farrell that I was gonna grab is not here at the moment. They're putting tape on the floor for her. So I'll wander around a little bit, swing back by. Freak showed up today, which was nice. Brent Spiner canceled out. I already met him once. Uh, Terry Farrell was awesome. Jonathan Freak was awesome. Although he didn't really understand the story I was trying to tell him. There was this kid at the beginning, or a guy with his kid in a stroller. He bent down and he's giving this kid the speech from like when Harry Potter was telling his son who he was named after. And uh, I was trying to explain that to him. And I'm like, dude, you're ripping this off out of Harry Potter. And the guy's like, or Frakes is like, well, it's just gonna, gonna confuse the kid. It's a totally different show. I'm like, I know, it's a totally different show. But I thought it was funny. But sometimes I just can't convey myself, I guess. But he was cool. He was really funny. Guy at the beginning of the line. <laughs> having him assign 10,000 Pop Funkos, so he was kind of making fun of the guy. Which was awesome, because that's really annoying. It's probably annoying for the actors, is it? Annoying for someone who just wants one autograph and not trying to make a buck. So anyway, that's cool. Were you there last year? 
No, okay, well then it'll be nuclear, but it's, it's, it, it, it's a wrong. All right, questions. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello, my name's Andrew. I was wondering if you had a favorite scene in the film for any of your projects. A favorite scene that I filmed in Star Trek? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure to say. Um, um, oh, gosh. You know, it's funny, the minute the word favorite is used, I just sort of close down. I, I have a number of scenes that I liked in a number of shows that I've done, but a favorite of all of those, not, not really. I mean, you know, I think probably the most rewarding scene in Picard, which was the last thing I did in Star Trek, was the final, or almost the penultimate, Scene with um, uh, with Picard and 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 King. Uh, this sort of the goodbye scene. So that that was that. Okay, next. Um, of all the lines you've had to um, like say, which was the hardest? Which was the hardest line? Like to say. Or for any reason? Um, well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, none of them are difficult once you've learned them. <laughs> so with the three-day deluxe pass, and it came with a lot of cool stuff. I mean, I really appreciate the bag, but it's got to be about two feet tall, if not three. So it was kind of awkward to carry around for a while. I had to come back to the room so I could drop that off, and I thought I'd lay out everything that was in there. Got this uh, print. It's two-sided. So, find me a frame for that sometime. Got this folder that you can use to put your autographs in. I already brought my own, so, but that's fine. The lanyard holder. I don't know why they didn't just put them on the lanyard, so I can switch that out. Okay, got several comic books, Fantastic Four, G.I. Uh, Joe, <laughs> Sacrament, that looks kind of cool, kind of creepy, I'll have to read that one. Uh, I was reading through this one, waiting to get into the thing, it's kind of entertaining, so I'll finish that up. And you got a blank comic book here, a blank sketchbook, so that's interesting. Oh, and a little Galaxy Column pin, I guess I can put that on my hat. But that's that. Uh, like I said, really appreciate it. It's cool stuff, but <laughs> that bag is huge, guys. You can scale that down a little bit for next time. And I would be fine with that. Now I gotta go uh, try to find a lottery ticket so I can do my dollar a day lottery scratching. And I could probably go down to the lobby, put some sweet and low in this, and make a couple bucks out on the street. So many more people here today. Well, that was an adventure, guys, getting in here, walking and walking for 20 minutes in a line. But that's really cool that uh, it's a lot more crowded today than it was yesterday. Probably not going to be so cool when I get over to the line for the autograph I wanted today. But I forgot my backpack. So I'm going to have to buy a $5 picture protector so I can walk back to the hotel. Put that in there. Take some look at some merch today, but. I have so much stuff hanging in my house. I don't really need any of it. But I will probably buy something. Can't really help myself. Vincent D'Onofrio has an interesting signature. 
I wanted a law and order picture, but he didn't have one. Just fine. So I got this Jurassic World. Yeah, a lot of Kingpin stuff from Daredevil, but I've never really even watched much of that, so whatever. What is wrong with me? I uh, got my autograph, took it back to the room because I forgot my backpack thing. Put the folder in it, so I put it in a folder back in my room. I forgot the backpack thing again. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm getting any more autographs, but the Steiner brothers are sitting there looking pretty lonely, but I don't know, another 80 bucks. I don't think I'm gonna do it. I got this little food court thing, pretty nice. Chicken and eggs. Got a Subway. Pizza over there. Eros, Eros, Gyros, whatever you want to say that. I would have said no. <laughs> but their approach to me was, how much money would it take? So I said, I did a mass singer. That's the last thing I want to do. So I, I mentioned just a, a fee. So much money. And they said yes. <laughs> and I was desolated. Je suis désolé. Um, Slime wants to find the sun. Slime has it, an intelligence. Trees are communicating with each other. Electrochem we did just recently discovered electrochemical signals from the mother tree are going to the young tree. Electrochemical signals along the mycelium of fungi. Our brain waves go electrochemical signals along our dendrites. I mean, the, the, the relationship between a tree and us is so close. Their DNA is closer than not. We can't deny that we're part of nature. And this nature, every... I talked to who discovered the... What's his name? The... the no, the ship. Bob Ballard! <laughs> exactly! Oh, what? Who said that? Put your hand up. That's exactly right. Okay. So, <laughs> I, deal, I, I interview Bob Ballard. So Bob Ballard, I said, my God, man, uh, you're incredible. You're doing all these things. Like, like the, um, what's the ship? The Titanic. Yeah, I said, I went down. His whole history, man, stay right there. His, because we'll get to God in a minute. No, that's a simple, that's a simple answer. The, the Bob Ballard goes down, down in his bathospheres. And he discovered these holes welling up that are into the magma. So hot water is coming the hot water somehow attracts, well, the calcium and, and all the minerals around the hot water build a flute up the chimney. Attached to the chimney at 600 degrees Fahrenheit are all these living entities, shellfish, worms, basic life forms are in 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Discovered bacteria way up high floating around the earth. Everything, bacteria in meteors that land on the earth. What happens after we die? I mean, that's the biggest mystery of all, isn't it? Yeah, it is, I agree. Do you agree? Yep. How old are you? 17. Are you worried about dying? Yes. So, so am I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not as worried about it as I am. No, not a problem. When you think of dying at 17, how, what do you think? How are you going to go? I have to say, I thought setting in on a William Shatner panel would be about Star Trek and you know, TJ Hooker or whatever. Some pretty heavy stuff with this guy. A lot of science talking about dying there with a 17-year-old and had a long religious debate with a guy, which is cool, but uh, it kind of took up the whole the whole time and he could have covered so much more but always great to see William Shatner and I hope I get to see him again.
Here's a little bit of the Saturday night costume contest. A lot of great costumes. You could tell people put in a lot of work. Took a little time to get it going. I don't know what the deal was, but they got it going and it was entertaining to say the least. Sanderson's. Well, I made it home and this is it. This is what I bought. Kind of unusual. I didn't get really any merch. I got a couple things for my sisters for Christmas, which they'll like. But this video is getting way too long. People only watch about five minutes of them anyway. But if you enjoyed that five minutes, make sure you like and subscribe. I do a lot of convention videos. I, I don't know, I go to four a year or so. If I can get more in, I'll get more in. But check out all those videos on my playlist. And my other videos, people like my tasting videos. I do some car stuff. And on shorts, I do dollar a day lottery scratching where I scratch off a $1 lottery ticket every day. I never win anything, but check it out. And uh, if you're here at the end of the video, leave me a comment so I know you made it through. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate you watching.